Hey folks, Lisa here from Call That Girl with a quick outlook video of the day. Today's video is all about this computer only. What it means, how to save your data, how to remove those folders from your IMAP accounts, how to back up the data, export, I'm covering it all. So this is not gonna be a quick video. Sorry, I said that in the beginning, but it's a very good learning video for you if you see this, this computer only. Should only be about 10 minutes or so, but it's well worth watching. Let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna teach you is that this computer only folders only show up typically in IMAP or a Microsoft Exchange Outlook profile where the folders are corrupted. That means they are not on the server and they won't show up on your phone or other computers. They are literally on this computer only. All right, so the first time you set up a Gmail account or an IMAP account with Outlook, I'm gonna give you a quick tour of how it works so you understand because it there's a few things you do need to know about an IMAP setting with Outlook. First thing is you want to come over here and check all the boxes and open them all. Make sure you get all your email downloaded. Then I'm going to take you down to the calendar down here. And here, I've oh, got to move that out of the way. Here you go. This computer only calendar. Now, this is very important for you to know, especially if you're going to be importing a PST into this file which I'll discuss later. But by default, Outlook creates a this computer only because it doesn't have any calendar to attach to. So unlike a PST, which comes with a calendar and contacts and a Microsoft Exchange account, IMAP does not. It is email synchronizing only. So what Outlook does is it creates a this computer only calendar, which holds all the calendar events when you accept them. These do not synchronize outside of Outlook ever. Okay, just take note of that. Then your contacts, same thing. These contacts are only in this computer and I find clients with thousands of contacts in there and they do not know this, but this is a very dangerous place to have them and I'll explain here right now. So when you go into your Outlook, you can go over to File, Account Settings, Account Settings again, you're gonna see the IMAP right here. Come over to Data Files, and I'm gonna show you this file right here. You're gonna click open file location. So this address right here is where the OST file by default is stored in your computer. It's in your user profile, app data, local Microsoft Outlook. You will see right here, very tiny, is the two little arrows pointing opposite of each other. That means this is an OST file that is currently synchronizing. A brand new OST is the size of 16,424 kilobytes constantly. This is the size of a very small IMAP or nothing, or it's brand new. This file here is really important because a lot of people don't know, but the this computer only contacts and this computer only calendar lives in this file right here. So let's say you're troubleshooting Outlook and you're like, oh, you know what? I can't get it to launch, so I'm just going to go make a new profile. And then when you get the new one set up, you're like, I don't need the old one. So you go and delete it. This file here gets deleted with that as well, which holds all of your data from the this computer only context and calendar. That's why I tell people there's two things you can do with this file is you can actually add this to your backup, which I highly recommend, whether it be your external hard drive backup or Carbonite, or you create a export of this yourself and back it up manually, which is what I do when I help all my clients with their data migrations. So now let's get to the this computer only folder for the emails. That's probably what folks wanna know about the most. Okay, so over here, you're gonna see that I actually created these myself because I wanted to show you how this works. Now I just expanded this out a little bit. This test folder two and, and this one right here, I actually made these myself so I can show you that anything that's in this folder right here is not on your server, it's not on your Gmail account, it's not on your phone, it's broken. So a lot of folks are like, well, how do I get that out of there? And I wanna fix it. And I'm gonna show you right now. So here's the first thing you can do is come up to your inbox right here and right click and create a new folder. And you can call this new test, just so you know it's a new folder then go and verify that you see it on your Gmail server and on the phone. Then you can come down to these emails here, hit Control-A, right-click, move, 
copy, and move it to new test. Oh, see, now we have our first boo-boo. The operation cannot be performed because the message has been changed. We're going to hit OK. Now, you might not always get that message, but I'm glad it popped up during this demo video because this is real important. So the next thing we're going to do is come up to File, Account Settings, Account Settings, Data File. We're going to create a data file just called uh, Gmail Move. Something real simple. Also take note, I do not like putting any PST files in the OneDrive, and that's where Outlook by default will have it if you have OneDrive set up. So I come down to this PC, C drive, user profiles, the profile, documents. I put it right here in the documents. There we go. Now, here's how you do the next trick. Come down to the PST Gmail move, make a folder called test move. Now we could take these. We're going to move them over to copy to folder, actually. Put it in the PST, put it right there. Now we can't do it again. So these are really broke. Now what do we do? Okay, so now we tried two things. One was just copying it to a folder, can't do that. We tried taking it to a PST, cannot do that. Now our third way is we're gonna take this whole Gmail folder, or sorry, the whole Gmail account here in Outlook. We're gonna to go to File, Open and Export, Import Export, Export to a file, hit Next, make a PST, Next. We're gonna back up the whole thing. Next, allow duplicates. Make sure we have the right location. Well, for this, it won't be a big deal, but I just don't want it there. I try to train people. Outlook PSTs do not go in OneDrive no matter what. All right, let's come back over here and go right there. Okay, so we're going to call this backup. I always, you know, try to give it a little name. Uh, July 10th backup. Oops. Backup Gmail. We'll allow duplicates. Hit finish. You can just hit OK, no password needed. OK, so now this is making a backup. And this is mostly what I do when I help people with this, this computer only. It uh, takes longer, and you better make sure you have enough hard drive space when you do this. And you also better make sure that you're not re-backing up 50 gigs of your Gmail to a small, smaller hard drive. It'll take up all the space. OK, now we come over to File, Account Settings. Data files, you can leave that there. It doesn't matter. So we're not going to probably use it, but click add. And now again, gotta go drill down to that. Should have just made a shortcut. The top there. But here's the backup. Hit OK. And I always come over here and rename it quick so I know I'm in the backup. All right. Now you're gonna see where I do the next work. Down here is the backup and here's the files and down here's the inbox now here's those three now you see here they're missing it says three there got to come down here to filter applied clear all and lift it do that for the other one too and just for reference if you have been bothered by that filter applied you can actually come up to view change view Hit apply current view and it'll lift them for everything. One of my top YouTube videos, by the way. Okay, so now we got the data down here. We can come select all. And now you can move it to the new test up there. And there we go. That's how you fix it. So there was three ways I showed you. It's okay to try all of them, but the third one is typically how I do a lot of my work. And most of my clients um, that I have to do this for, they've got more than just one or two. Sometimes they've got hundreds of folders that can come from a corruption, a bad import, you know, just um, not doing any maintenance, not noticing it till it's too late. And um, so that's kind of how I fix a lot of those things. Then I'm going to show you how to do the calendar. So the calendar is kind of like the same thing as the folders there. I'm trying to get this a little wider. So you can see this is the one that Outlook made when you uh, set up the Gmail. 
down here is the Gmail backup I made. So what I'm going to do over here is just put a test event on here and I'll do another one there. Okay, so now I've got a couple tests over here. Now there's two tricks in calendar you can try. It might work, it might not, but you can come up to view, change view to list. So now you got these two here. You could try to copy them over to the calendar of Gmail backup. But notice it made the this computer only, and this one doesn't have one at all. So I'm gonna kind of take you down a rabbit hole, okay? So if you're still watching at this point, you are gonna learn a lot more than you thought. <laughs> okay, so then you, I'm sorry, I'm laughing, but it's, so that's how it goes with my videos. Uh, come over to here and click show folders, okay? Now you notice that this one up here was the uh, the calendar backup, so it's bringing that, but this one, oops, get out of the way. This one here has nothing, okay? So we need to make a calendar and we need to make a context. So you can right click, new folder over here. I'm gonna call this calendar to, I'm just gonna give it a name, calendar backup, so we know. We're gonna put it there and then you click this button and there you go. So now that made a calendar for us to move the corrupted events to, and you can right click new folder, you know, call this contacts, backup, and then go pick contact item. There you go. All right, so now we actually have a location to move those to. Now we can come back to the calendar. So now you're gonna see three here. This one is for sure the corrupted. This is the one I was gonna move it to. This one here is the new one I just created. So we can get these two in here, move, copy to folder. We're gonna put it right there and select that. Okay, now those are good. Same thing with the contacts. I didn't make any contacts here. I'll just make one quick, Lisa. Give us give it something to chew on there. And put my phone number. So if you guys need me, you can know how to reach me here. There we go. Okay. So now we have one contact. Same thing. You can select the contacts. You can copy them over to the contacts. I'm sorry, this one right there, the Gmail move. So now those are in a very uh, what I would say better location, a healthy PST file, which you can, you know, do whatever you want with there. But uh, exactly the same thing as you're moving the contacts and the events over to there, and then you could move them over. But that's where I'm going to stop you. I never will take data that's in a, this computer only and put it back into another one. It has to move to a PST file. So at this point, you could consider this a solid PST, you know, or for the calendar, a solid calendar in a PST. So the, the, this computer only can be really interesting because a lot of my folks don't know it's there. They've got tons of calendar, tons of contacts. I tried to tell them like, look, even if you don't want me to change anything, I'm going to back this up for you no matter what, because it is a very dangerous location and they're fine with that. So when I do back it up, I take this and go to file, open an export, import export, export to a PST, hit next. I make a PST of it. I like them better than CSVs for some things. Um, hit next. Just make sure that's the calendar there. And then we're gonna browse. Now here it's already set there. So we just call this TCO calendar backup with today's date. And there you go. Allow duplicates. Yeah, you know, some people don't want the, the there's duplicates there that don't want it, that's fine. And there's that. So at this point, if I'm backing up all these, this computer only, I try to tell clients, let's move you to a safer location than a OST file that everything's in this, this computer only. And at that point, most folks want the 
um, they want a phone syncing product or they're like, you know what, let's just put it all into a PST and then I'll add it to my backup, which I'm more than thrilled to help them set up backup for any of their PSTs. Now, as a final tip for this video, if you have many email accounts, let's say you might have an exchange account and outlook.com, you know, something else other than Gmail or IMAP, I always recommend you set that up first when you go to set up your Outlook. And here's why. By default, if you use an Outlook.com account or a Microsoft Exchange account, it already sets the calendar up perfectly without a this computer only, okay? It, it'll just sync with the server nicely. Then if you were to import any PST files, they would go into that calendar right there. You don't need to worry about it. The this computer only is only there basically because you set up an IMAP account first and it has to have it for Outlook to work. So it's just kind of there by default. All right, folks, that's it for this video. And I know I went pretty fast. If you've ever hired me, you know I work fast. I explain things fast. I keep the boo-boos on the screen. Um, I don't know what problems you're having. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach me at lisa at callthatgirl.biz. You can call me at 612-865-4475. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you want to subscribe, I've got a few more videos coming out. And if this was uh, helpful and you want to donate to my Starbucks tip jar, there's a link in the description. I get a lot of little coffees and I appreciate every one of them. That's it, folks. See you next time.